Hi everyone, Mrs. Stahl here. The steps of writing, we call this Powray. The first step in writing is to plan. Today I'm gonna to give you a sample of a four square about giant pandas that kind of goes with the book that I read in another video. So today we'll be writing about giant pandas and it's gonna be informational. O stands for organize and remember that we use our four square to stay organized. Then W is just a plain write. So you're gonna get your ideas down on paper from the four square then revise and edit. So this is tied and we talk about this all the time at school and I kind of wanted to put this out there. All of these documents will be um, scanned in and available for you to look at. Tied, T for topic. That's gonna go at the very top of the paper. I are your important details or the main ideas of what you're going to write about. I stands for important detail. Remember, we're gonna have three of them. The next are the juicy details, the smaller little bits that help support your important details and brings the reader more information. And E stands for ending. So these are the steps of a four square and I've kind of come up with steps in sequence. So like an order, we know that sequence is an order of how we do things. And these are the steps to making a four square. I found that this is the easiest way to do it. So I highly recommend using these steps. Number one, you're gonna fold your paper and trace the lines. Now, do you have to fold your paper? No, you don't. You can just draw your lines if you're feeling frisky or brave, <laughs> um, or you can actually fold your paper. I'm gonna show you that in a second. Then you're gonna add your triangles for transition words. You're gonna add your T, I, D, and E in the proper places. You're gonna write your three important details first. This makes this so much easier, guys. This makes the whole rest of the four square just run super smoothly. If you know what you're talking about, the rest will be, it will just fall into place. Then step five, you're gonna write your topic sentence. A strong topic sentence always lists all three of your eyes. Next, you're gonna write your ending sentence. And then we've added a zinger and a feeling sentence to the E box, and I'll show you that here in a minute. And this would be a good time to go ahead and write that in. I find the most challenging part of the four square is finding those juicy details. So if you wanna save that for last, I, rec I highly recommend it. Uh, step eight would be just add those juicy details in. Okay, then a couple questions. Is your name at the bottom of your four square? Did you add transition words? So when I add the triangles for transition words, that's a perfect time to just go ahead and throw those in. So let's get started on a four square about pandas. So I'm gonna show you how to fold this paper to do a four square. It's really easy to do. Now, do you have to have notebook paper? No, you don't. You can use just plain white paper or any kind of scrap paper that you have at home. Uh, I like to have notebook paper because it has the lines. So if you just fold down this margin, this top margin, remember we've talked about that a lot. Oh, look how crooked this is already. <laughs> That's all right. And if it's not perfect, it's fine. You remember I talk to you guys all the time about how this is just our notes and our plan. So if it's not perfect, it's okay. So I folded down this top margin like that. Now I'm gonna open it back up because it's gonna make the rest of the folding go a lot easier. Remember we bring the bottom or the tail up of the paper and we line it up with where we folded the margin down. You see this? It might be kind of hard to see, but I'm lining this up right here like this, but I do not want that folded over. So fold the tail up. I'm gonna kind of hold this up to show. So this is my margin, and I folded my tail up to meet my margin. Now I'm just simply going to turn it and fold it in half like this, okay? So it's that simple and remember we have done these this should just be a reminder for everyone now watch how i make my lines okay remember we do not want to trace this line up here at the top okay so i'm going to start with the line right underneath the margin and i'm just going to go across like this okay and i'm using a big bold marker for you to see you guys are welcome to use pencil at home or just anything that you have, all right? I find that pencil is easiest because if I make a mistake, I like to be able to erase. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my triangles in now for my transition words. And they go in all four boxes, just like that. So this right here is what your four square should look like um, 
when you fold and trace your line. So we have now done step one, okay? Now, we've added the transitions. We did step two <laughs> as well. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do before I forget, I'm gonna add in my transition words. Now we know that this is gonna be the first box. I'm just gonna simply put the word first. This one, I'm gonna use the word next for this box, okay? You can also use second, you can use then, you can use also, and I'll do a special video just about transition words to help you guys kind of remember. I'm gonna do then in this box, and then last right here in this box. Now I'm ready to add the tide, okay? Right here at the top, I'm gonna put T for topic. Let me go ahead and put my other lid on. There we go. Okay, so T for topic goes right at the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in my eyes. Make a big eye, circle it. And then everyone knows that we put D's in these boxes. Now, if you're in third grade, okay, you might not have three D's for your writing and that's okay. If you're in fifth grade, I fully expect everyone to have three, three juicy details in each box. <laughs> fourth grade also. Guys, you fourth graders have been rocking it out. So I'm really excited to see your work. I mean, just everybody's been doing fantastic on writing. So I am so excited to see what you guys come up with. In this last box, let's talk about this for a minute. So you can see that I've added T and I's and D's to all of these boxes except for the last one. This one's very special. This is where we put our conclusion or where we wrap it all up. This is the ending box. So you wanna put E for ending, okay? Skip a few lines and then just go ahead and write zinger in here. I like to do it in all caps because why not? Let's have some fun, all right? And then put a heart right down here at the bottom. So this box will have three parts. You'll have an ending, a zinger, and a heart. Now, let's come back to the topic. I've been doing this a lot um, with Mrs. Heddleston's kids, so I wanna share it with everyone else as well. This right here is your introduction paragraph, okay? Now, you will have one sentence on here when we're done with this four square today, but as a reminder, I want you to go ahead and write hook and put a question mark, and you can do that very small so that you have plenty of room. And then I want you to do a heart. So you should have three things in your topic sentence for your introduction paragraph. You should have your T for topic sentence, a hook to get your reader interested, and a feeling sentence. We're not going to write the hook or the feeling on our four square. This is just reminding me when I do go to write that I need to include those. And I am so sorry, I keep bumping my camera. Okay, now giant pandas. I learned a lot of awesome things from that story that I read, so I'm gonna go ahead and write about it because I'm kind of into pandas right now. Now, I'm gonna get my important details from the headings, which also show up in the table of contents. So I remember that they talked about um, the bear's colors, okay? So a panda has interesting colors. I'm just gonna write colors in the box. Remember, we're using caveman talk. We wanna only use the important words, not very many words at all. Um, another thing it talked about was how the pandas were disappearing, okay? I'm gonna write disappearing. And I'm gonna spell it right for you guys. <laughs> really trying, okay, disappearing and then it also talked a lot about recovery, and I thought that was really good about how pandas are coming back and how they're helping pandas recover. So these are my three important details. I have colors, disappearing, and recovery. Um, I'm really not sure about colors. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough information there. I really like the part about the bamboo and the thumb. Maybe I should do what, what pandas eat. I'll change that now. You see how easy that is? Okay, I just drew a line through it and then I changed my mind and that's fine. This is a plan, okay, great. Now, the next step, let's refer back to our steps. So we have done, we folded our paper, we folded our paper. We have triangles for transitions. 
We added our tide. We wrote our three important details. Now we're gonna dig into writing our topic sentence. Okay, we're gonna make sure to list these three I's. I'm going to say, I learned about giant pandas um, including what they eat comma um, how they are disappearing comma and their recovery so as you can see this is a very long sentence i used commas and i used and so again the most important thing is that you list your eyes and you try your very best this is something that we can rewrite in the future if you're not happy with it. So go ahead and get something down on your paper. Um, if you're writing an informational, it's gonna be I learned about or I know some facts or there's a dif different sentence starters we could use there. Okay, now I'm gonna work on my ending. We've written the topic sentence right here. Okay, now we're gonna go in and write our ending sentence. On my ending sentence, what I'm gonna do, here's my easy peasy lemon squeezy trick. <laughs> I'm going to list my eyes first, and then I'm going to say that's what I learned about pandas. So here we go, wish me luck. <laughs> okay, um, what pandas eat how they are disappearing. Oh, I spelled disappearing wrong. That's okay, kids. Remember, this is a rough sketch. And if you spell something wrong, it's fine. How they're disappearing and their recovery are three things. I learned, I'm running out of room, about pandas. Mrs. Stoll writes huge, and I'm sure you guys do too, some of you. Okay, let me read this again to make sure it makes sense. What pandas eat, how they are disappearing, and their recovery are three things I learned about pandas. Now, I know I have an extra S here. I'm just going to draw some lines through it because I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, let's work on the zinger. For those of you who have never heard me even talk about zingers, a zinger is just where you kind of hit them in hit them in the feels. You're going to drive your point home. You're going to hit the ball out of the park. You're going to leave your reader thinking, man, that was a good essay. So for my zinger, I'm going to say, and it can be a question. It can be like telling them to go do something, which I really like, like a call of action. I'm going to say visit your zoo today to see a panda. Okay. I might change that later to say visit your zoo today to see a giant panda. You can even say visit... And then you can insert a website where you know that they have pandas on there. There were some websites at the end of the book that I read. That would be really cool. The next thing we're going to do is a feeling sentence about how I feel about pandas. I think giant, and I'm not sure why I'm capitalizing giant pandas. Should I? Hmm, that is a question. <laughs> I think giant pandas are amazing animals. Let's see, I have my book in front of me and I'm looking in the book for my details, okay? So they do eat meat. One of my juicy details is gonna be meat. They also eat bamboo, that's the big thing, okay? That's mostly what the pandas eat. And because of this, 
they have that thumb, which it makes them special and different from all other bears, which I thought was super cool. Okay, now disappearing. So they're native to China. We'll talk about, we'll do a sentence about China when we write. Uh, the reason they're disappearing is because of deforestation. And that's basically where all of the bamboo is being cut down. Okay. And they're very isolated. Let's see. One of the reasons why they are disappearing because it's hard for them to reproduce. So this is how they are trying to recover pandas. We're going to talk about the Wulong Panda Reserve because that was a big deal in the book. Okay. They're trying to basically breed captive pandas. So we'll do breed captive. Now, do I have to write pandas here? I don't, but I'm going to. Um, we're trying to keep this to one, two, or three words, so that's fine. Okay. Panda diplomacy helps educate people. Okay, panda diplomacy, and that's talking about when they're sending pandas across, you know, into other zoos and other areas, areas to help educate people. So I think that's cool, panda diplomacy. So this is a completed Foursquare. I will have this up for you to look at in a document. If you guys have any questions at all, you can um, email me. Hi all, I'm gonna come, oh my word, why? Hey everyone, I want to come to you today and we are going to, what am I even saying at this point? I hope you can see the whole thing. <laughs> I'm really stretching to look.